Hello everyone, again it's Fred from Notes of a Nomad. This is probably going to be video number 98 unless something comes up and I postpone posting this, but this is the Canada Trip Part 2 where we continue in Thunder Bay and then uh, we continue on. My dad and my mother go back from Thunder Bay to Vancouver and Gail Dominic and Samantha and myself go on to Southern Ontario, Toronto, Niagara Falls, then to Ottawa, Montreal. And then from there we fly back to South Africa. But this is about Canada. And then the last oh, few minutes, maybe even 10 minutes approximately, are just a melange or combination of videos that I took all the way f across during this trip of Dominic and Samantha doing a variety of things. So it ends with uh, the children who were only, as I said, two years old and four years old and now are 50 years older than that. So that is the next video and hopefully you enjoy it. And at this point in time, I'll say Adios, au revoir, wishing you, your family, and friends lots of love and laughter. And bye for now from Fred and Notes of a Nomad. Hope you enjoy the video. Hello, this is the second part of the 1971 Canada movie that I took. And we start where we left off in Thunder Bay. We went to <coughs> Centennial Park in Thunder Bay, which is a logging museum. And you can see there's my dad and my uncle, Wayno, who is my mother's brother, <coughs> Gail, and there's Dominic. This is a museum for the logging camps that were very, very proliferate in Thunder Bay. There's a lot of logging going on, pulp and paper mills, lumber mills. So these are examples of the older bunkhouses and stables because I use horses and that's a horse drawn grader that my uncle Wayno is standing on. And so there's where as an example. We also went to Kekebeka Falls, <clears throat> which is a falls which is about 130 feet or 40 meters waterfall on the Kamis Kaministiqua River, which is about oh, 20 kilometers out of, of outside of Thunder Bay. And you'll notice the water is brown because apparently it's the spruce bogs where all the trees and the bogs are. So the water tends to be brown because of the bogs, which are the source of the water. Uh, there's a story I remember hearing when I was at school about an uh, Ojibwe princess who was, I don't know, captured by the Sioux warriors who wanted to attack the uh, Ojibwe. So they said, oh, take us to your camp. And she took them over the falls. So the Sioux warriors died instead of attacking the Ojibwe or her father's uh, camps. So that was Kekabeka. Now we're at a, my uncle on my father's side. Uncle Snub, his name was, and that's his summer camp. So we're looking at his summer camp on a lake, and you can see a lot of the other summer camps around the lake. I think it's called Loon Lake. I don't know if I'm right, outside of Thunder Bay. But he was, I think he built this and uh, he used to spend all summer working on the summer camp and so we were looking around he was showing my dad a lot of the aspects of the camp he has built and it's very very um, meticulous how he does everything even the, the pathways and as you can see and uh, how he designs everything. Now we're playing horseshoes. The objective is to throw a horseshoe and get it, uh, the horseshoe around the post. And if you do that, you get uh, points. There's my dad 
throwing a horseshoe and the uncle snub throwing a horseshoe. And if you get a ringer, which there's a ringer, you get more points, obviously. And if you, I think you get it within close a certain distance, you get one point. And that's my uncle Wayno, who's my mother's brother, uh, also at the summer camp. Uh, so there, it's Dominic and Samantha. And after spending some time with the family in Thunder Bay, my dad and mother went back to Vancouver, and Gail, Dominic, and myself carried on down to southern Ontario around Lake Superior. So this is the shores of Lake Superior. We had an airplane that was leaving from Montreal, so we had time to get to Montreal before our plane left, and this is how we were managing it. This is on the rocky shore of Lake Superior. As you can see, it's, uh, and I think Gail is picking up some stones, looking at the different types of rocks and pebbles that are there. And I think you saw Dominic or, and or Samantha in the prior part of the video also. And as we made our way across the Canadian Shield, there's an enormous amount of lakes and rivers. So there's Fungus Lake and Catfish Lake and Black Trout Lake and Old Woman River. Uh, there are some mines there, some closed, some open. Uh, eventually I know there were gold mines found there, there was old silver mines, there was that uranium mine. And you'll notice now on the luggage carrier on the top, we have more luggage because I think my dad was carrying luggage in the back of his car, so we didn't put it on top of my car until <clears throat> we left Thunder Bay. There's still snow on the side, so I, I would imagine it's probably April, maybe early May this time of year. Spring is around, but there's still snow and ice on the shores of Lake Superior. I think this would probably be the nickel mines in Sudbury. Uh, this is the enormous nickel mining complex in Sudbury, Ontario. So we're now entering southern Ontario, where we've left Lake Superior. And again, mining is very prolific throughout Canada in many ways. So those are the headgears in Sudbury. Now this is definitely southern Ontario because of the farmland. You can see and it's turning green so we're sort of getting closer to spring and then it's Niagara Falls. So we're definitely in southern Ontario if you're seeing Ni pictures of Niagara Falls. Those are some of the towers in Niagara Falls. And You can still see though there's still ice at the bottom of the falls. During summer you can take boats up the river to go near the falls and those boats are called Made of the Mist. And there was just a quick picture of a power station because a lot of electricity is generated near in the power stations near Niagara Falls. You can see the mist coming off of the falls and you will see some ice floating down the river, showing that it's still very cold. As I would imagine, as I said, it's probably end of March, early April. And this is at the top of the falls before the water goes over the falls, and you'll see some pieces of ice floating in the water. Now, as we were on our way back, to, on our way to Toronto, from Niagara Falls, we had an um, incident with the car. And in shortly, you will see the car parked on the side of the road. <clears throat> and what happened was the gearbox packed up. So we unloaded the car, put all our luggage on the side of the road, as you can see. And we were standing there, and a car stopped. It was a convertible and a man and a woman who were traveling from 
Niagara Falls to Thunder, from Niagara Falls to Toronto, uh, gave us a lift into Toronto where we stayed in a hotel. And we, well, I think this definitely looks like we went up to probably the CN Tower because we're looking at the island. This is the main freeway on the waterfront and there's three islands in uh, the water harbor front. That's the Toronto Star Building and the airport. And you can see the islands just in front of the harbor front. There's three islands there. So we had some pictures of some of the tall buildings like the Toronto Dominion Bank, etc. And had a look around downtown Toronto before we left and we took a bus. You'll see shortly the Voyager bus, like the Greyhound bus. But before that, we went to City Hall, and this is the water fountain. A lot of people come at lunchtime at City Hall, have their lunch outside. See people, because this is downtown, a lot of people wearing their business suits, etc. And this is the park in front of Toronto City Hall and there's a tram. Those trams still run today in Vancouver 50 years later. And here's a picture of some of the new City Hall buildings. And across the road is the old City Hall. So that's the old City Hall being viewed from the water sort of park area in New City Hall. In winter, those they f make an ice rink on there. So we're on our way to Ottawa on the Ottawa Express. And the next pictures on the Voyager bus are in Ottawa. Some of the waterfalls that we saw on our way into Ottawa on the bus. And then you'll see the Parliament buildings. There's uh, Some people I can imagine by in Ottawa here is the Mounties and the Parliament building. And we'll see the Centennial Flame. And the Centennial Flame was created in 1967, which was the 100th anniversary of Canada. And now you see a lot of tulips, and I mean a lot of them. <clears throat> so obviously spring has come if the tulips are blossoming. And these tulips are every year given to the Canadian government from Holland because the Canadian soldiers in World War II helped liberate Holland. And so every year they send thousands of tulip bulbs and they're planted, as you could see them earlier, in Ottawa. And there again, you has a better view of the Parliament buildings with a Mount Royal Canadian Mounted Police man walking across the grass. And there it says the Centennial Flame, and the fact that it uh, details on why and how it was created to commemorate the hundred years anniversary of Canada being in, uh, become a country. Then we went to Montreal. And here's a few views of Montreal. Uh, five years, or four years earlier, in 1967, they had, because again it was Canada's centennial, they had um, the, what was it, the International Fair Expo 67. A lot of the buildings were built, and this is some of the buildings that were built for the Expo 67. And there is also a picture of Habitat 67, which you'll we'll see shortly. These are some of the, on the older part of Montreal. You can see what blazers were 29.95. And some of the older buildings 
of Montreal. Also, I took some pictures during, I think, lunch hour, and you'll see a lot of the people crossing the street shortly. Uh, mini skirts, I think, were in that day, and, and the people in Montreal are very stylish and always dressing up. So it's very <clears throat> noticeable when you go to Montreal. Of course, the metro, the subway system, and that's Habitat 67, which was created as sort of a modern type of architecture for living in during Expo 67 as well. So those are some of the buildings that were created for Expo 67. From here, we eventually took a plane on our way back to South Africa. So that's where we departed. Of course, the car, when the gearbox broke down, we left it on the side of the road. Uh, I did get a, a letter from the Canadian government saying, what do they want to do with the car? They found their car there. So I said, well, I don't want to do anything because I got it. I think they must have sent it to my parents who forwarded it to me from Vancouver to South Africa. So these are still some pictures of Montreal. And as I said, this is probably, you'll see all the different people and even their uh, mini skirts and so on in those days. Shoe shine boy. People coming across the road, I think it was the pedestrian crossing. Some fella, I think, making jewelry. So this gentleman was looking at what the fella had for sale and discussing with him what to buy. So once again, you see some of the pedestrians crossing the street in 1971. And there's the fella looking at this fellow's, I think it was jewelry, discussing what he should buy. So that was a few pictures of Montreal, and with that, uh, I then spend the rest of the video just with some pictures of Dominic and Samantha in particular. Now this is scattered right across Canada. Some of these were taken in Montreal, some were taken in Vancouver, and a variety of places, but I just put some of the pictures of Dominic and Samantha together. So you'll see Samantha climbing up the ladder and going down the slide. Again, she was two years old in those days. That was 50 years ago. And that definitely was in Montreal. And then this was in Canada, oh, sorry, in Vancouver. It's all in Canada earlier. And this was in the backyard of my dad's house in Vancouver. And they were playing, I think, wild animals. Then a little bit later on, you'll see some of the neighbor's children came and played with Dominic and Samantha, so I've got some videos of that. My dad was raking up some of the, the leaves and so on now that uh, spring had arrived. So those leaves had probably fallen in the fall, got covered with snow. And here you can see Samantha and Dominic playing with the older children from the neighborhood who came over to play with them. And I think they're playing things like Ring Around the Rosy, and I'm not sure what else, other things. I think, again, they were playing, they were wild animals or something. So again, these are the sort of <clears throat> pictures and videos that you enjoy uh, many years later, in this case, 50 years later. 
So I wanted to get these videos off of the DVD because I don't really have a DVD player any longer other than this computer that I have and I'm about to donate this computer to someone because I've got three and <clears throat> this is the oldest one. That's probably why it's got a DVD player because computers don't have DVD players anymore. So that's why I have decided, hey, it's time to keep this and put it on for posterity, so to speak, up on YouTube, where at least, hopefully, it can be viewed by people who may be interested in seeing what I and my children were doing in 1971. It's hard to believe it. Half a century ago. Wow. Where does time go? Eh? <laughs> I like the ending of this video. It's a picture of Samantha running. If you wait, you'll see there's something unique about this video of her running, holding her mummy's hand. It's very cute how she's running at that time. Because it's still, as you can see, um, relatively cold. You can see her jacket is a warm sort of winter jacket. Again, early spring. And we went to the zoo, which was on Stanley Park in Vancouver. I don't believe that I think the zoo is gone now and this polar bear I don't think is too happy being in the zoo um, I think that what he's doing there is probably saying oh, I'm not happy to be here of course uh, there's Samantha feeding the ducks and back one polar bear is sleeping the other one's complaining and the seals People feeding the birds, Dominic feeding the birds, and again, Samantha, Gail with a, I don't think that was a real fur coat, but she did get a fur coat from my mother. Uh, this is an old Canadian Pacific Railway steam engine that is uh, just on this, <clears throat> sitting in Vancouver, obviously not working. And a fire truck, an old fire truck, Vancouver Fire Department. And this was the, just jumping back to Thunder Bay. I believe that was where we started this video at the logging museum. So there was Samantha and now Dominic on this. It's probably a log rolling. You climb up on and see if you can walk on the log rolling. And this was in southern Ontario was a farm, uh, well, not a farm, but an area where the fellow had built all of these things with Hansel and Gretzel and the three little pigs and so on, and Goldilocks. And so they could look and built all of this Humpty Dumpty. And now we're back in Vancouver at a park in what's called Little Mountain <coughs> in the sort of center of Vancouver. And this was a sculpture by Henry Moore, a very famous sculptor. And this was the children were just entertaining themselves, walking around uh, the sculptor. I think it was called, I think it's called Knife Edge, but I'm not sure. Just my memory, if it serves me. But children tend to love playing on this. And here's Dominic and my friend Ken, who owns the boat that I've mentioned in previous videos. Uh, this was Boat Harbor, and again, we had that uh, barbecue on the beach. And this is him playing with a fellow by the name of Per Forrest Jorgensen. Don't know why I still remember his name, but because it was so unique, 
per Forrest Jorgensen. So uh, now he's obviously in his 50s too. And uh, Dominic and him were playing in front of where Ken lived at that time. He still lives there, but not in that house that he was in then. He bought some property from the uh, fellow who owned the area, Ken Kendall, who was called the pirate, or called himself the pirate from Boat Harbor. And Ken built his own house overlooking the harbor and still lives there to this day. So, again, interesting to see what they were up to 50 years ago, just playing on the beach in Boat Harbor, or Pirate's Cove, as it was nicknamed. Well, this is coming to the end. These were the in the previous video, video number one, and there's Samantha, which maybe if I was able to cut this and put this in the video number one, when the um, mountain goats approach the car, and here's Dominic eating ice cream, but he's dipping his uh, chips is french fries and the ice cream quite a combination and this was the garbage gobblers that they had in british columbia and of course dominic's curious sticking his head inside probably to see what's inside the garbage gobbler and this is the last thing and this is what i said very interesting video of samantha walking it was very cold but she was bare feet so a good south african walking in bare feet so that's the end of this video, part two.